I am Natalie Simpson, and I'm 36 years old. The profession I work in every day, wearing a suit, is... Thank you very much for patronizing us this time. We look forward to your next visit. I offer a polite nod and bid farewell to the customers. I am the young manager of the restaurant. Our family owns and operates a historic restaurant that has been serving customers for over 100 years. My father works as a chef, and my mother serves as the head manager. I decided to follow in my mother's footsteps and work at this restaurant right after graduating from college. I believe that the reason our restaurant has been able to continue for 100 years is because of the reputation for excellent service provided by the manager and the staff, in addition to the delicious food. My mother began to experience some health problems after turning 60. Although she usually rests, on good days she comes to the restaurant, and my husband handles everything at this restaurant. I met my husband in the restaurant business 10 years ago. At that time, when the management of the restaurant was beginning to falter, my husband entered as a management consultant. My dad, who's really good at his craft, had a hard time figuring out business plans. He was slow to adopt strategies like using the internet to attract customers. It's my current husband who really improved the old-fashioned management. Thanks to my husband's hard work, a few months later, the restaurant became stable and even more customers started coming compared to before. We started dating when we were in the roles of consultant and manager. It was the day our contract ended when my husband asked me, Would you consider dating with marriage in mind? That's how it all started. After that, my husband quit his consulting job and has been supporting the management of the inn as an executive in place of my father. My husband's parents live about an hour away by train. My father-in-law is a serious person. who retired last year after working at a company for 40 years. My mother-in-law is a homemaker. My mother-in-law actively participates in the local community and seems to have a wide circle of friends. It seemed like she was enjoying herself every day. But according to my husband, my mother-in-law has always had a flaw. She's a spendthrift. She has a weakness for luxury clothing and cosmetics and often can't resist buying them. Sometimes she even gets scolded by my father-in-law for going overboard. I was a little worried about my mother-in-law before we got married, but I thought it would only be a few times a year that I would have to deal with her. Actually, I've been troubled by my mother-in-law for the past two years. Since my mother became ill and stopped coming to the restaurant as often, my mother-in-law has been coming to dine at the restaurant more frequently. When she first came, she was with my father-in-law. Because it was the first time, I decided not to accept payment, thinking they were my husband's parents. My father-in-law insisted on paying, saying, It's not right like this. But I said, No need to worry. Please come and visit again. Since they wouldn't visit the restaurant often, I thought if they came once every six months, my in-laws would be pleased. So I thought it was fine to treat them to a meal like this. But this idea was too naive. My mother-in-law thoroughly enjoyed herself and began coming once every two weeks. Can we get the set menu? It's not much, but as a thank you, I'll make sure to promote this restaurant to my friends because I have a wide network. And then she started visiting the restaurant once every two weeks. The set meal that my mother-in-law orders costs $350. Providing this for free every time was challenging even for the restaurant. But my father said, Well, it's just part of socializing. So I decided to think the same way. I was hesitant to consult with my husband because I was afraid he might scold me. And I didn't want to worsen the relationship with my mother-in-law. There was another issue. It's my mother-in-law's attitude toward our staff. She started to adopt an intimidating demeanor towards them. Hey, you there, part-timer. Don't just stand there daydreaming. If you've got free time, clean up around here. Each staff member has their tasks for the day, including time for cleaning and visually checking on each customer to provide necessary care. We're not just idling around with free time. It's troublesome to be arbitrarily scolded by my mother-in-law who knows nothing. Oh, um, Mom, 
There are other customers around, so if you shout at the staff so loudly, Humph, what's with you? They're not disciplined as part-timers. I told you, you should be grateful. When I try to share a little opinion with my mother-in-law, it ends up like this. She shouts without caring about the surroundings. One time, Hey you over there, my chair cushion is too hard. Bring something softer. Who do you think is paying for all this? She shouted. You haven't paid a single cent. I was about to say it out loud, but I swallowed my words at the last moment. When my mother-in-law is at the restaurant, I never get a moment of peace. The staff also feel sorry for themselves on the day my mother-in-law visits, as she makes them work hard. Then, one day, I received a call from the restaurant. Hello? Oh, Mom, it's rare to get a call from you. What's up? Natalie, I have a little favor to ask. With my mother-in-law speaking in an eerie sing-song voice, I had a bad feeling. You see, I have lots of friends, don't I? So I've been telling all my friends about your restaurant. And then, everyone says they want to go there. That's very kind of you. Is this some kind of awakening? There will be ten of us, including me and my friends. Yes, yes, we'll all have the top-notch full-set menu, please. All right, I understand. Um, I guess it's better if you tell me about the budget, right? What are you talking about? I said I'm introducing my friends. Huh? So, since I'm inviting them, you understand what that means, right? Inviting? Does that mean another free meal? No, 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 no. You must be joking. No, wait, Mom. I hurriedly tried to protest to my mother-in-law, but... When I speak, it's because there's advertising value, so I want compensation for that. Providing a full set menu that satisfies me is the least you can do. I won't accept anything else. I'm counting on you. With that, my mother-in-law hung up the phone. I was left stunned for a while. Both my staff and I are troubled by my mother-in-law's behavior. If things continue like this, everyone's motivation will plummet. I have to do something. With determination, that night, I decided to discuss my mother-in-law's actions with my husband. I told him everything honestly, from eating for free to her terrible attitude towards the employees. Is that so? That's terrible. I wish I had noticed sooner. My mom has always been a bit selfish, but this is going too far. It might be better to say she's arrogant. Can I take care of this? I have something in mind. Then, the day arrived. My mother-in-law arrived at the restaurant with her friends of the same age, smiling. Welcome, Mom. We warmly welcome your friends as well today. As I guided them to the private room for group customers. I'm worried my daughter-in-law might inconvenience everyone. Please, Natalie, don't embarrass me. Suddenly, my mother-in-law started picking on me in front of everyone. I could only force a smile. Even before the food arrived, my mother-in-law was already noisy. Don't we have some softer cushions? Is this not to your liking? The friend said, No, no, it's lovely, so please don't worry. But my mother-in-law said, Honestly, don't make my friends feel uncomfortable. She muttered in complaint. Is the food still not here? Natalie, aren't you organizing things properly? I apologize. I'll bring it out quickly, so please wait a little longer. Despite it being shortly after their arrival, she continued in this manner. My mother-in-law continued speaking in a manner that indicated she couldn't be satisfied, unless she found fault with everything she saw. As I listened, nodding along, she didn't stop, this time asking incessantly if the food was ready yet. And that's not all. Just like usual, she started disciplining the staff. She started saying things like, The staff here seem poorly trained. Or, if the daughter-in-law isn't responsible, it affects the staff too. Our restaurant's signature courses were highly praised. While my mother-in-law's friends enjoyed the food and complimented it, my mother-in-law alone criticized, saying things like, These dishes look cheap. It's because Natalie has no taste. Or, The staff here are always slow. I should have instructed them to come to the room within two seconds when I called. My mother-in-law, who complains about everything, 
is a complainer no matter how you look at it. While my mother-in-law was being like that, her friends were getting excited about the food, saying things like, Thanks to Natalie, it's so delicious, and happily enjoying their meal. I wonder if my mother-in-law's mood improved because of her friend's attitude. You're my friends, so we need better drinks. Natalie, go get the alcohol from over there, she said. Mom, um, but that alcohol is... Come on, just do it. You should just silently get it. Drink plenty of this premium wine tonight. This is my daughter-in-law's restaurant, so my daughter-in-law will pay for everything. Is that really okay, Mom? I whispered to my mother-in-law. Huh? I don't know what you're saying, but just hurry up and bring it. Come on, move it. And so the banquet proceeded. Ah, thank you for the feast. Natalie, it's time for us to leave. See us off. Oh, please call a taxi for me. Of course, with your money. Okay, Mom. Today's total comes to $30,000. Will you be paying by cash or card? I informed her. Huh? My tipsy mother-in-law returned to a serious expression in that moment. Yes, I heard that you invited your friends here for free. I understood that you would be the one paying for this. Huh? What do you mean? Do you mean a breakdown of the fees here? If so, then the wine you ordered cost about $3,000 per bottle. Then why should I pay? I'm your husband's mother, you know. It's awfully rude to think that you can demand money from me. We're not demanding any money from you. We, as professional chefs, have provided our customers with the finest hospitality through professional service. Our staff has delivered service that more than adequately matches the price. My mother-in-law's face turned red as she trembled. How despicable of this daughter-in-law. Do you even realize how much I've done for this shop all this time? This is repaying kindness with malice. With that, she began to shout, Anyway, you just need to do as I say. It would be rude to inconvenience my friends any further, so we won't need a taxi today. Well, everyone, let's head home. As my mother-in-law attempted to leave without paying. Honestly, what are you doing? There stood my father-in-law. Y you Why are you here? Our son wanted to talk to me about something, so I came to see if you were really causing such trouble. I politely nodded to my father-in-law. Dad, I apologize for the inconvenience you've gone through to come here. No, no, Natalie, not at all. So what exactly is going on here? Um, well, Natalie, because she's been showing gratitude to me on a regular basis, invited me out today. So I brought some friends along, you see. Right, Natalie? My mother-in-law sent me a pleading look, but I chose to ignore her. No, I never mentioned inviting ten guests free of charge. In addition to the arrangements for ten guests at the restaurant, there were also many orders for premium wine. Mom actually utilized services worth $30,000 at fair rate. I believe it's only fair for her to cover these expenses. Upon hearing this, my father-in-law's expression turned stern. So were you planning to place such a large order and then push all the payment onto Natalie? My mother-in-law faltered, saying, y yes I've told you before, haven't I? That I refrain from frequenting this restaurant because it puts pressure on Natalie and everyone. You said you understood me, didn't you? But despite that, it seems you've been coming here every two weeks. Well... It's because Natalie asked me to. Stop making excuses. I know you've been lying to me. Do you have no remorse for causing so much trouble to all these people? I'm sorry. Perhaps I got a bit carried away. What are your intentions with the $30,000 spent today? That's... My mother-in-law faltered. As my husband observed this, Everyone knows that you, Mom, have been eating for free at this restaurant all this time. Don't you understand that it's been putting pressure on our livelihoods, too? If Natalie pays the $30,000 today, and our life became very difficult, how are you going to take the responsibility? My mother-in-law's shoulders slumped. You're right. Well, then, I'm sorry to trouble you, but could you please pay the money? My mother-in-law pleaded with my husband. However, my father-in-law... You don't understand the value of money. So from now on, try working and earning $30,000 to pay it back yourself. Huh? 
even if you say that. Actually, the matter has already been settled. Isn't your older brother running a farm in the countryside? When I told him about this story, he said he would straighten you out. So work hard and pay it back with your own effort. With a firm and authoritative tone from my father-in-law, my mother-in-law seemed unable to say anything more. Finally, my father-in-law lowered his head deeply to us. Natalie and all the employees, I apologize deeply for the tremendous inconvenience caused by my wife. We may not be able to repay immediately, but we will ensure that we take responsibility and repay it to you. I am sorry that I could not pay attention to anything until now, even though it was my mother's doing. My husband also lowered his head to apologize. Afterward, it seems my mother-in-law reluctantly had to part with the luxury brand items she had purchased before. But the money from selling them was far from enough. To earn the remaining money, my mother-in-law apparently stayed over at her brother's farm, working from morning till night every day. Her brother, upon hearing about the incident, seems to be furious, making her work hard every day, unable to afford any luxury. While I can't help but feel a bit sorry for her, it's somewhat amusing to think of my vain mother-in-law doing mundane farm work every day. And about a week after my mother-in-law started working, she called me. I'm truly sorry. I've treated you terribly before. Despite all the lavish treatment you've given me, I got carried away. Just this time, just this time, please forgive me. If you forgive me, I'll make an effort to get along with you. Right? Isn't that good, Natalie? Ideally, I wanted to get along with you from the beginning. That's right. It's never too late to start now, right? But I find it hard to forgive what you've done up to now. You've been disrespectful, not only to me, but also to the staff. Moreover, this is not just a promise between you and me, but also with my father-in-law and husband. Please take full responsibility and repay the money yourself until the end. With that said, despite my mother-in-law still shouting, I hung up the phone without caring. Just how self-centered can my mother-in-law be? I'm beyond amazed at how shamelessly she called repeatedly. After all the trouble she caused, I have no intention of helping her. Despite the harassment the employees endured from my mother-in-law, they continued to work hard without anyone stopping them. As a gesture of gratitude to these employees, I happily offered them a special treat. People are treasures. I'm truly angry at my mother-in-law for harassing such good people. I sincerely hope she completely changes her ways. The restaurant continued to thrive. Although none of the friends my mother-in-law promoted came, my husband, employees, and I will continue to work hard every day to ensure our customers are satisfied.